Bambius Kaleido here and welcome back to my channel. So today we are creating another tiny home in The Sims 4 and I have to say this build actually turned out not as tiny as anticipated and that's because it's actually a very long build. It's quite narrow um, because it's meant to be a terrace house even though I'm only building one terrace house usually these houses would have multiple kind of connected one after another um, but i just wanted to do one lonely terrace house today for you all and it is of course based off the one story terrace homes that they have here in melbourne and that is why i have named this house the mini melbourneite so there's going to be some stereotypical things to do with melbourne here in this build and i'm really excited to get into this because I love Melbourne. I moved here just over a year ago and it's probably my favorite place in Australia, like my favorite city anyways. So I had a lot of fun kind of doing all of the Melbourne stereotypes all in one little terrace home. So I did do a bigger speed build of the two to three story terrace homes. Uh, I'll link that one down below because it's actually three in one on one lot and it's really, really cool. And it has like the big Melbourne facade on the terrace houses. And I kind of had that experience from that build to bring into this one. Uh, and I kind of had creative, you know, and I was looking at some Google images and also kind of bringing inspiration for what I've seen in person. Like I said, these houses are very common here in Melbourne. I'm not sure when they were built, but they're definitely like, I reckon 1920s, maybe even before that, maybe late 1800s. They're just really, really awesome. And they've definitely been here for a very long time. So in recent, like, I guess in like 20 or so years or, or something like that, it's become very popular for people to buy and renovate these homes because they are just so pretty and historical. And I don't think they actually have like a world, not world heritage, but you know, like the history heritage thing where you're not allowed to change the house a lot. But lots of people here in Melbourne kind of, uh, respect history and people like to let a building keep its character instead of like totally redoing it or modernizing it and that's something that I really love here in Melbourne. Uh, you see a lot of buildings that look super grunge and very maybe derelict on the outside but then you look through the window and it's like this amazing warehouse that's been renovated into a home and it's just gorgeous uh, there's a lot of stuff like that here. Grunge is definitely in and I love it. It's so cool. Uh, so in this house, this one's obviously an old sort of heritage home that's been renovated and they have kind of give homage to it. They've tried to keep some roses and lovely plants in the front little yard. I love the little yards. Like I said in my other terrace building video, I feel like the little garden, how people create them, kind of gives an insight of who they are. So the people who live in this house obviously are kind of not conservative, but um, they kind of want to keep the building looking as it would have. And they've just given it a fresh a uh, bit of paint just to kind of make it pop a bit. And I really like the whole white and black. I've seen it around here in Melbourne. I did put a little carriage. I don't know why. I was pretending that it looked like a stroller, but I end up getting rid of that later because it's just a bit weird. We also chuck in this emblem out the front, which is just so weird. It's I know it looks a bit odd, but I kept it there because they usually do have like uh, writing, uh, like when the building was established or like the name of the building up in that sort of part of the facade. Uh, but I thought, well, this is going to be called the mini Melbourneite and coffee is like a huge culture here in Melbourne. So why not have a coffee little emblem out the front? Like, yes. <laughs> oh gosh. But you guys can always get rid of that if you don't like it. I think it kind of adds to the character of it all. And 
yeah, I think it's all right. I love how different some of the facades of buildings of terrace homes can be. They're so quaint and adorable and I really think like it looks like a crown almost. Well, I imagine it like a crown on the front of a home. It's just so nice and it's different, you know. Back in my hometown, a lot of the houses in the main street had that and it's kind of reminiscent of home also, like the buildings doing that. I don't know if it's really in other countries. I'm sure Australia got it from somewhere, like we're not that old of a country and Melbourne especially is very influenced by other countries, I feel. So, uh, yeah, it probably, let me know down below in the comments if your country has these sorts of like style buildings, the terraces with the big little crown like facade. Uh, so out the back here, we are of course putting in some bifold doors because it would not be a Melbourne home without these. These are so common here. And I honestly think it's because mosquitoes don't really exist here. Like we have the giant ones that don't bite you. Like I think they actually eat baby mosquitoes and you can see the giant ones like they are so scary but they don't hurt you at all. We don't really have to worry about like mosquitoes or anything down here because it's not a very tropical sort of climate so uh, I'm sure some parts of Victoria have mosquitoes but definitely here in the city I haven't really run into having many mosquitoes and also flies aren't as common so we could definitely just like open up that whole part of the room to the outdoors in summer and it would just be so lovely. Some of our friends used to have bifold doors in there. Oh, I don't think it was bifold. I think it was just like a uh, actual like roll out. Like it wasn't a screen, but it was like big wooden doors. Uh, but what I really like about bifold is that they literally fold up and they fold up um, against the wall. So it really feels like it connects the indoors with the outdoors and it's just such a cool design. I love them and if I ever design a house I'm definitely going to include bifold doors but to do that I probably would have to live here in Melbourne because I don't think they would really work in especially like the north coast of New South Wales where I used to live because there are just so many mosquitoes and flies and stuff. It would be hell if you had all of that big wide open space to the outdoors. Like it would just be so bad. The house would be infested. It would be dreadful. Uh, but yeah, so in here it's starting to take shape. The kitchen is a little bit odd but I've sort of noticed with these sort of long terrace homes a lot of the kitchens are a bit tricky and they kind of just make do with what space they have and if that means it's going to creep around a wall then it's going to do that uh, and they usually do have an island and then a big entertaining space that's connected with the dining. So this house probably wasn't originally always in this sort of layout because it's definitely been renovated and a lot of people do renovate these little terrace homes here in Melbourne. It's quite popular to do so and they are so expensive on the market like million dollars. It's crazy and I've actually because I've been looking at like how much these places cost and even the ones that haven't been renovated are so pricey. They're so sought after and I can understand why they're super adorable and surprisingly spacious for something so narrow. Uh, but yeah, I really wanted to get a bit playful with here uh, in the kitchen. So we added in some plants above the little, I don't know, the coffee and sink area. I definitely wanted to include some pops of green and plantery. Uh, and we had the light woods with the concrete sort of contrast and black and white. I think all of these colors really come together and something that I really adore myself. It's a style that I like and I've seen a lot here in Melbourne. So that's why I was sort of 
gone with this style again. I know it's a reoccurring theme that I do. I actually don't really like those see-through chairs around the dining table, but they are so common here in Melbourne. Like so many people have those, uh, what are they called? Acrylic furniture. So it's like see-through acrylic furniture and I'm not sure if it's good for the environment or anything. It's probably not even biodegradable, but yeah, it's so popular and I just needed to input that. And also there's a lot of like Swedish sort of um, style furniture here in Melbourne that is used. Um, that's probably like everywhere right now. It seems to be the style of retro Swedish or Danish kind of uh, furniture and I really like it too. I wish that I could have inherited. I have a friend who actually like his parents inherited like Danish uh, furniture, which, which is just so cool. Like how lucky is that? Because when you actually go into those shops, those furniture stores where they have both like uh, restored old and also new, you look at the price tag and it is scary. Like, oh my gosh, like this is going to cost me like 500 to a thousand dollars just for like a table. Like it's ridiculous, but uh, I'm more of a person who is okay with paying a large amount for something if it means it's going to last forever and it'll be something that I can pass down from generation to generation. I really like that idea. Um, so when I think about buying pieces of furniture, I'm definitely going to be like keeping that in mind that I want to be able to uh, put it in my will eventually or something like that. And I like that idea of not just like giving money to your kids, but also giving objects that are like heirlooms that make your own type of heirloom. So uh, speaking of heirlooms, I know this is sort of getting off track of what we're building right now, but uh, my dad has a bunch of heirlooms. We actually have uh, grandmother and grandfather chairs and they're both very different. My grandmother's, well, the grandmother chair is very like old and it's falling apart in the garage at the moment, but all it really needs is like a new padding for like to sit on and then it would be totally fine it's like made out of really nice like mahogany or something like that and uh the grandfather chair it's still usable it's in the house my dad sits on it like every day and <laughs> it's really old oh my gosh it kind of looks medieval I don't know how old they actually are uh but also my family because they're quite old from here in Australia we came over as like miners I think coal miners or something like that and um in like the early 1900s we were still like very close with our family in England so we haven't been here like for that long I think there are some convicts in my family but not really that many it's more like on my dad's mum's side so on my father's side we have no convicts and isn't that so weird like talking about like convicts in the family but it's so common here in Australia we actually have a lot of convicts like that's how Australia was really like built up um, but anyways uh, what was I saying so we also have like a piano which is like custom made and it's really ornate and awesome so my uncle has that one down in uh, I think it's New South Wales just below like Canberra somewhere and uh what else? There's another piano. My family has always been very musical. So we have a couple pianos in the family and that are like heirlooms. Uh, my dad also has a grandfather clock, which is super old. And I hated the noise of it when I was little. It was just so deathly uh, and spooky. Uh, and I can't really think of anything else, but I'm sure there is more. I just love the idea of having sort of those heirlooms and when you look at those objects it's like looking back into the past uh, but let me know down below do you guys have any cool like family heirlooms like let me know I'm interested to hear like do you have rings like your grandmother's ring I know it's very common for people to like have a, a family ring that you propose with oh that would be so cute oh I love that idea um, but yeah, anyways, we are nearly finishing up with this bathroom, which is just so cool because we have a skylight. How neat would it be to have a bath and then you just like lie back, look up at the stars, 
Not that you would see any stars here in Melbourne, but even in the daytime, maybe the sun would come down. It would be like sort of a, like you're in a pool almost because you feel like you're outdoors. And we also have like vines on that wall too, which was really neat. And I like the whole black and white style that I have going on in this house. I try to make it more inviting and cozy in this main big like entertainment slash living room. Uh, they got such a huge TV. I just realized how big that TV is. But people are really into having those lavish things here in Melbourne, I've noticed. So honestly, this build kind of doesn't entirely fit with our tiny homes kind of aesthetic or like meaning of, um, you know, saving money and stuff. But the good thing about this build in The Sims 4 anyways, is that it's actually, I think it's under a hundred thousand. So if you worked up for a while, this is actually realistic for your Sims to buy. It only has one bedroom though. So definitely a bachelor would live here. You could possibly fit in another bed, but it definitely would be very squeezed in. You might have to renovate or push the house back a little bit more. So because this home is a lot bigger than my other tiny homes, I just want to kind of explain why I wanted to add this to the series because I know it doesn't entirely fit the whole theme. So I, I still think that even though these houses are very expensive, because they're so small, you still get to do the whole thing of like having more, um, having less is more, I mean. Uh, so you still wouldn't have to buy as much furniture or stuff as you would if you had a big, you know, like four bedroom, huge mansion, you know, like a four bedroom is not like a huge mansion, like it's a normal home. You guys know what I mean. And I really feel like some people do it really cheap too. Like a lot of people here in Melbourne are creative. Uh, they're very hands-on people. People love to create. They love to make things. So I, there's so many people who make their own furniture, people who make their own artworks, etc. Having a different sort of um, job career than like, you know, your normal nine to five job here in Melbourne is like not looked down upon or anything. Like I haven't really had anyone that I've met like question or be weirded out by my job as a YouTuber. People are just so open-minded and chill to the idea of like freely creating and just like doing what you love. It's so accepted here. And that's something that I really love about Melbourne. People are just so relaxed. And uh, if you ever come to Australia, make sure you come to Melbourne because I heard that, especially for foreigners, it's just something, a place where like they're very well accepted and people would just like want to talk to you, especially if you're foreign, like if, I, I don't know if you're like from France or from America, people want to uh, hear about your travels, where you've been, uh, especially like make sure you go into a coffee shop and just hang out, you know, have some brunch. Of course, you're gonna have to have some brunch if you come to Melbourne. That is like the culture here. I've actually always loved brunch. I just didn't know what it was called until I moved here. I've never been an early bird, even though like, well, I have, I have been an early bird. Like I wake up early, but I've never been like, get out of the house early. I'm more of like, wake up early, lounge around, and then have like a late breakfast. So late breakfasts is a brunch, breakfast and lunch combined. Get yourself a coffee, a cappuccino or latte. <laughs> I'm a latte girl. What are you guys, if you drink coffee, do you like lattes or cappuccinos? I know that's just a different cup, really. Uh, I always have almond milk because I'm vegan and almond milk is honestly so good. And I didn't actually drink coffee until I moved here in Melbourne. I would have like a really weak coffee. It would m probably might as well be a hot chocolate because I'd put in so much cocoa and sugar. But uh, <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't believe moving to Melbourne has actually converted me to coffee. And <laughs> it's so good. I don't know what I did without coffee because even before making this video, I had to have my coffee because I was getting sleepy. I've been pre-recording so much for my trip away to the States, speaking of um, traveling. Uh, so 
yeah, it's been a busy couple days and I've been sick and stuff. So that hasn't really helped either. So we're kind of filling out this front garden, just wanted more. We're pretty much all done on the indoors. I think I may have changed some of the lights off camera because I just wanted to make it look a bit more not industrial, but I feel like a lot of people here in Melbourne reuse old, um, what would you call it? Like reclaimed items. So they'll go to like salvos or like a secondhand shop and just try to like find old things and implement it into their houses. So like old lights and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, we're up to the screenshots now. I love this little mini Melbourne night. I hope you guys do too. And we got to chat a little bit about Melbourne and heirlooms and stuff. Oh gosh. Um, but yeah, so I'm not sure if we have hit 200k yet. I am away from home right now, but I just want to say in case we do, a big thank you to you guys. I've been overwhelmed with the support lately and I've just been having so much fun creating recently, especially with the My Little Pony stuff. Um, but yeah. Alrighty guys, well we are going to end it here. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I love you all to bits and I'll see you all in another video very very soon goodbye